So what have we learned so far? First of all, it's amazing how creative the children are. It's not unusual to see brand new words being invented. Here are some favourites from this year's writing competition. I love manfragette, the term for a man who works for men's rights. We can see here how the author has taken the word suffragette and adapted it to blend with the word man to come up with a new word. This instantly fires our imaginations and makes us want to read the story. We've also learned which words are encountered most frequently. Although the corpus contains lots of words, the 200 most frequent words account for 60% of the corpus. This means that a relatively small number of words occur very many times. By far and away the most frequent words are so-called function words. Words like and, the, a, was, in and as. Words that make our grammar work. Content words, words that carry information about what's going on in the story, are quite rare in the top 200. Those that are there mainly are about people, including mother, father, boy, eyes, voice and face. The number words 1, 2 and 3 are also very high in frequency. As well as the number of times a word appears, we are also looking carefully at the type of context the words appear in. This is important as language is often ambiguous and context is needed to work out what's meant. For example, the word ball means something very different in the context of a football game than in a story about Cinderella. Seeing how children can use words in subtly different ways to express different meanings is teaching us a lot about how reading and writing develops. One of our early findings is that children are faster to recognise words when they have appeared in lots of different contexts in reading experience. This tells us that lots of variety in reading practice is important in helping children learn to read.